Hello, hello, this is M. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to continue the menu options overview in Excel and we are going to talk specifically about the insert menu. Uh, please uh, view also the, the other uh, videos for the other uh, menu options that we have in, in Excel to have an overview about what you can do and how you can leverage uh, Excel at its best. Moving on and having a very first look on what we have here, we have uh, the tables and pivot tables, we have the illustrations, we have the add-ins, the charts, um, the maps, the sparklines, filters, links, comments, text and symbols. And we are going to uh, have an overview about each one of them. To get started, uh, let's move back for a moment to the home option. To the uh, to the right, we have the analyze data, and from analyze data, we can take some sample data, and then we can close it and get it back to the insert option. Now we have some some data to play with. So um, what we can first notice is that whenever we go anywhere in the table the table option disappears. When we go outside the table, the option reappears. Why? Because whenever uh, we click on the table, also the table design appears, the submenu appears, uh, and we can see that this is a table called table one, and we can re rename it and call it uh, test. If we want to create a table, what we can do is to take our simple uh, sample data. So what I will do will be to press and keep pressed on control, then press also and keep it press shift, right arrow, release right arrow, down arrow, release everything, and then copy and paste as values. And those are um, simple values. And as you can see, Whenever I click now on the data, uh, the table option is here. So what I can do is again, control shift, right down arrows, and then press on the table. And this will give me the option to create a table. The shortcut to do that would be to um, make the same selection and then ever after having released everything to press on the control uh, button and the T from table and I will have exactly the same option. So now I have two tables, one that was uh, imported sample data and one that I created based on the simple simple uh, sample data so i will delete that and uh, start or continue with uh, with the uh, pivot table options what are the pivot tables um, to have an overview about what the pivot tables are if we go to the recommended pivot tables we can see how they look like so uh, compared with the row data compared with the table what we have here it's um, a summary of information uh, took from that specific uh, source data or raw data. The benefit of the, the, the pivot is that we can have more structure, uh, be more consistent in, in, uh, in the approach that we have, and also we can have uh, quick calculations made by, by Excel. So let's create, create our very first pivot table. And um, to do so, what we will do, because it's a table, uh, we can simply uh, click on pivot table. And then the pivot table option will know that here I had a table called test. If it was a, a set of simple data, not a table, the option uh, would have been to select everything. So again, control shift, pressed, right, down arrows, and then click on the pivot table. And then I would have had the uh, entire range here. That would be, would have been exactly the same, the same thing. So I'm clicking here to confirm the range and I create, I can create a pivot within a new worksheet or within the existing worksheet. If I'm taking the existing worksheet, then I need to specify a location. But for our purpose, we are going to create it in a new worksheet and 
when it's created what we can see is the very first view on the pivot table so we have that image at the left and then at the right we have the pivot table fields regarding the the menu that appears or might disappear whenever uh, it disappears and you need it you can simply click on the image and that will appear again for the uh, overview or visualization of uh, the fields you have multiple op options if you go to the to the settings uh, symbol here you can click here and you can see that you can have a vertical split you can have only the sections you can have only the areas as you wish let's get back to the to the initial view and to see which kind of options we have uh, in the in the pivot table fields we have the filters and the filters will always appear at the top of your pivot table um, under a drop down list format so you will be able to select by category to see your data based on those specific filters and you can choose which is the filter um, that better uh, suits you for instance we can take the category and put it at as filter because here we have several categories and perhaps we would like to see um, the data based on those categories then we have the columns and the rows there is no specific guideline or best practice that will tell you what kind of data to uh, to use to populate the rows and the columns usually one common practice is to um, think about the, the visualization and uh, also to the purpose that you have and uh, try the best that fits uh, your your expectations so if i'm taking the the products and putting them to the columns i can see that uh, those were put under the columns so please keep in mind that we see it horizontally because it's by column don't uh, avoid having um, misleading information that the columns should be vertical no it's sorted by column and this is why we have this horizontal view if we take the um, the years in the rows we have the years shown here by row and to see everything here might be quite difficult uh, if I want to, to have a clear view I can simply close that so um, it might be difficult to follow the information here so let's right click in any cell within our pivot then show field list and to change the products with the years making that switch you can see that it looks a bit better right so we have the the products at the row level and then the year so we can easily see exactly what we have for for each uh, each product per year then uh, to have uh, a data populated we can take the cells and populate them into the values into the values you can add the data that you want to analyze that might be uh, summing data making averages counting whatever formula you want to use um, but in the values you always need to put uh, the information that will show you the end result the final result but when we populated the, the sales data we can see that we have uh, some numbers here while in our data source for the sales we had uh, the amounts in dollars so we don't have here an error we simply need to format to replicate the same format to have the same visualization and to replicate the format what we can do is to go here to the value field settings then to the number format and from the number format to take currency to take the the us dollar in our case and then for the decimal places either to reduce it to zero to increase them or simply type here the number of decimals that we want to have i want to have none so i will put there a zero and click ok and again ok 
and now we have the pivot table with uh, the data. In some cases, what you might want to, to see or to have, it will be a view per category, for instance. So based on your, your uh, information uh, um, mentioned in the filters, but you might also want to see each uh, information um, side by side or, or one by one without making too many uh, too many um, selections so what you can do you can go here right click move or copy create a copy move to the end and then click ok and then you will have exactly the same copy where you can choose for instance the accessories and you can continue right click move or copy create a copy move to the end and then to select the bikes and now what you have here it's let's rename it here is bikes and here we have the accessories but this is a manual work and here we have a couple of categories but if you have 20 categories or more um, or a, a consistent number of categories then that manual work might not fit you so let me delete the manual result that i have here and what i will do i will go to the very last uh, worksheet press on shift and then left click on the mouse and that will select everything from the first to the last i only have two but if you have 10 or 20 or more uh, you could have uh, clicked on the first one and then press the shift button uh, left click on the mouse and you would have um, had the, the, the full selection um, there allowing you to right click then and to click on delete so if you want to uh, delete multiple sheets, you can do like this. Now let's try uh, a more uh, automatic way of replicating the data by category um, using uh, an option that we have in the, in the pivot table. So when we go in the pivot table, we have the pivot table analyze sub menu and there we have the pivot table name and let's call it uh, draft presenter and here below we have the options including the show reporter filter pages if we had more uh, more uh, filters so if if you had used uh, for instance also the rating let's do so in fact let's also take the rating and put it among the filters and then you go again let's say that you are insert you go in your pivot then in pivot table analyze then options show report filter pages and you can see the rating also appears because we just added them so let's say that we want to have um, that uh, that view per category we can simply press ok and then what happens is that we have all the worksheets created by by a uh, category in an autom automatic way without putting any effort now let's delete everything so i i just left clicked on accessories i'm pressing the shift button then i'm pressing again the left button from the mouse selecting everything right click delete and delete everything and we got back and that would be a very quick overview about the pivot tables um, you will see in the dedicated video for the pivot table everything that we can do with uh, with them uh, which are the options how we can create uh, diverse types of, of uh, pivot tables and so on and so forth so we are not going to insist too much today on the pivot tables uh, just to be able to continue with the overview of the insert menu in excel the following section that we have is the illustration section so here the very first one is to add a picture and we can select among the pictures from this device uh, some uh, available online um, stock images or 
online pictures from uh, from uh, the resources that are linked with uh, with Excel. So I will go to this device. So I will take a photo from my computer, for instance, and then um, let me look here what I have. Let me take this image and as you can see here we have the image inserted. As soon as we inserted the image like we had for the pivot table, a new submenu appeared which, which is the picture format menu. So uh, if I go outside the picture, that menu disappears. If I'm getting back, it reappears. Here what we can do is to play with, with uh, some, some formatting options, some styling, um, some shadowing, so we can do um, quite a few things with, uh, with that submenu, but again that we will see it in a dedicated video for the visualization or the, the, the images in, uh, in Excel. Then we have the shapes option. Uh, and here among the shapes we have a series of options that we can choose from. So let me take that rectangle and as soon as I click on the rectangle I have that small plus sign. So what I can do is to left click on the mouse and simply draw my shape. Again, whenever we go on the shape this time we have the shape, shape format uh, menu that we will see more into details uh, in, a, in a dedicated video for today what we are going to do is simply to look up for one of the most used um, options that we have for the shapes and then let's right click on the shape when we have those that's uh, those circles uh, around the shape. Go to the very last option from the bottom, format shape. And then what we can do is to change the fill and also we can change the line, the border line. We can change also the uh, width that we have uh, in the border line and uh, this is one of the options that we have for, for formatting uh, shapes. Then we have the icons. For the icons, we can click on them and what we will have, it will be a quite generous series of icons that we can use in our, uh, in our Excel. Let me check, it's not loading. Okay, perfect. Here we have that, that series of, um, of icons that we can use and um, from, there, from here we, we, can, uh, we can take one icon or multiple icons. So uh, for instance, if I'm taking, uh, I don't know, I am taking the books, I'm taking uh, the brain, I'm taking uh, Brontosaurus, I'm taking um, a candy, I have insert uh, four, okay, let's insert those four. And then what we can see is that all of them appeared here. And uh, what we can do, for instance, is to press on the select button, select them all, and then from the graphic formats that just appeared, what we what we uh, what we can do is simply to change the either the fill or we can change the outline or the effect or whatever but again for the for the formatting we are going to have a dedicated session Continuing the, with the insert um, uh, menu, what we have, we also have the 3D models. And for the 3D models, we have two options. The option to have um, a 3D model uh, pre-made, pre-fabricated, made, made by, by, uh, uh, by, the, uh, by Microsoft, or we can have our own 3D model. In my case, I don't have a 3D model. And what I can um, see is that Again, we have um, quite a few options here. And from here, let me take an animated 3D model inserted here.
and let's enlarge it a bit and also change the direction and here you have your 3d animated 3d model that uh, is now present in your in your excel uh, if you wanted to have um, a static 3d model uh, you you uh, could have uh, for instance let's take uh, toys let me take this one and that's a static 3d model so uh, you can um, you can impress your audience while adding 3d models if you have um, if, if you have uh, an excel 2016 uh, 2019 if you have uh, the the 365 um, uh, uh, office version you have those options that you can play with and you can have them in your own excel and again whenever you go to a 3d model the 3d model appears but we will see this uh, um, in um, in other video so uh, let's move ahead with uh, with the the um, the add-ins what are the add-ins are um, micro programs or micro scripts um, that are available for excel and that allow you to either for instance add the calendar in your uh, excel file just to have a, uh, a pop-up window showing your calendar or to have um, specific tailored charts or um, graphics that you you want to use so the the add-ins are are are, um, are available and you have a quite consistent number of add-ins that you can add to excel um, is to uh, add options that were not built in into excel so you can do that also considering that more add-ins you start to add more uh, sl probably slower your excel will will work then let's continue with uh, with the charts and for the charts we have uh, the recommended charts which are um, recommendations regarding the kind of data that you have and keep in mind that you first need to select your data and then to ask for the recommended charts which makes sense because excel could not uh, recommend something without knowing the data when you click on your table and that might be a pivot table or a row data that doesn't matter you can if it's row data you can simply select the range uh, and excel will show you some options that might fit your your expectations the pivot charts are doing exactly the same so uh, you, you can see here that um, you can choose among the same options but this because the recommended charts are working uh, on, on with pivot tables so you can create pivot charts while clicking on recommended charts after having chosen the um, um, a range within your your pivot while the pivot charts are not working if you don't have a chart that's the the only difference then you can uh, you can uh, choose between um, those two mainly when when you have uh, uh, pivot table data then for the um, one by one tables one benefit is that you can see outside the the, the excel menu but um, in some way embedded in your in your worksheet you can see the data you can pre-visualize the data and that might be uh, quite uh, quite practical uh, for you to see okay i like this one so i will take this one and that's it if you don't left click on the mouse then uh, you can you can, that the chart will simply disappear moving ahead with uh, with the 3d maps what we have for the 3d maps uh, it's a sort of new app uh, and when you click on that one 
a new window will open which is this one um, similar to to to, to a globe or google art and if we had uh, some some geographical data like city like uh, uh, references for sales per region in that case uh, we we were um, we were capable of uh, of uh, using also the 3d maps but for the maps and the 3d maps so the 2d maps and the 3d maps we will see this uh, in a dedicated video because um, uh, today we uh, move ahead on on the insert menu without diving too much into the uh, details that are are uh, showcasing other types of uh, of visualization so let me close from here and that will not close my excel that will close only the 3d maps viewer so i'm back here and we can continue with the spark lines the spark lines are evolution charts so that, that we can use the spark lines when we want to see a trend when we want to have a very very simple and straightforward uh, visualization about some data in our case that kind of data could be year by year uh, evolution so what i need to do is to go here then uh, click on the line spark line as you can see the location it's already selected because i started from here if i had no cell selected that would have been blank so what i want to see i take the data range and the data range i can click here and then select this part each one of the three years Please keep in mind that you don't need uh, to add the totals, the, the general average and so on and so forth because that would give you uh, a wrong data. We don't want to see a spike, we don't want to see a bubble just because um, uh, we, we also have the total but we want to see exactly the evolution year over year. So I can confirm that this is the selection from B six to d6 then click it here and for the location range what i can do is click here and now to click it here so i can do both ways if i don't have a selection when i click on the line spark line i can add it uh, after um if i'm um, if i'm i'm starting with the uh, with the cell then that cell will appear if i have nothing here or I forget to select it and click OK, that would give me an error. So I absolutely need to uh, specify uh, which is the cell where we want the spark line to appear. And then we click OK. And this is a, um, a line spark line, which has its own sub menu uh, where we can just change the color, we can uh, change some, some formats. And that's um, that's um, a line spark line. If we want to replicate the same the same uh, view for each kind of the products, what we can do is not to do it manually, but simply to do, go to that um, down right point. Sorry, I have the image that was overlapping. So let me put it here. So I have this and whenever I go here, I have the plus sign and I'm dragging it till uh, the bottom. So now what I have, it's um, a visualization of the evolution year over year. And for instance, if we take the vest, we have uh, a drop down in 2016 and then a partial recovery in 2017. And this is a bit more easier uh, to, to, to view. We can do exactly the same thing for the uh, columns. So uh, if I'm taking the same data range, click here, I already select that cell, click OK. I have the same uh, sort of uh, evolution. Taking the same example, we can see the, dropped, uh, the drop and the, the partial recovery. 
thinking uh, about the, the video that we had for the home menu what we can do it's also to click here for instance and then take the format painter that we already saw and uh, to uh, simulate a continuous table or also for the spark line so we can do so but please keep in mind that if you are copying the format that uh, will not mean that you have an extended pivot table no that data is linked to your pivot table but not part of the pivot table and to check this out we can again right click show fit list um remove the year and we will have everything changed so we don't have any more the lines because for the to create a line we we need at least two dots um we still have the columns because the columns are are showing the data that uh, we have here so it's uh, mostly the same because you cannot compare different data you see it's uh, quite of a model but uh yeah you have here the pivot and here your spike lines uh, spark lines that you just created and those are linked but now merge are not merge sorry so uh let me put back the year in the columns and everything is set back so we are all good by the way whenever you have uh, you have two images that are overlapping and you want to create a sort of effect also what you can do you, you can go to each one of the images and then to right click and for instance if i want to uh, bring to front this that will bring to front uh, this image if i want to bring this up to front i can bring it to uh, front sorry oh it's already sorry it's already uh, it was already uh, sent to back that one so you can bring to front and send to back uh the images if you want to create that kind of um that kind of uh of uh, effect okay let's go uh and continue with the spark lines uh the last option that we have aside of line columns uh the, the line and the columns we have the win and loss that is linked to a sort of um, water flow view we will see when we were discussing the about the charts we will see what a water flow is uh it's similar with uh, with uh, what we can see here in some some way uh, but uh, a win loss spark line show us uh, whenever we have positive and negative data we can see exactly where we stand so it's really a dive deep on the profit and loss the win and loss the positive and negative uh, values and so on and so forth as we only have cells which are positive we cannot use it but please keep in mind that you also have this option then we have the slicers what are the slicers slicers are linked with pivot tables so whenever you have a pivot table you can also add a slicer and the slicer is a sort of remote control uh, control panel that allows you to um, filter your data in a more let's say pleasant way of um, of selecting your data so if i'm clicking here i will have automatically the uh, the categories that i have in my in my pivot so for instance if i take the year the category and the product and i click ok i will have those three slicers so one slicer for each uh, type of information that I, I choose when we add the slicers we have the sub menu about the slicers and again from this sub menu we can add uh, some shadows uh, we can change the color uh, we can um, we can change a different model or we can even create a new slicer style if we want to create something really personal personalized and um, really that that uh, uh, fits our color code in the in the document so now if i'm clicking to a year 
then that year will be selected here. So for instance, I can say that I want to see the breaks, uh, which are components for 2015. And this is what I have. If I want to see the, the bikes, uh, the bike racks sorry for 2015 those are accessories uh, and i can see the the information there if i want to see the overview about the components so to have this filter activated the category i will have only active the the products that were related to that category and then again to change the the data that i have if I want to select multiple years, for instance, I want to, for instance, take 2015 and pressing the control button and 2017 and I have two years. And if I want to see the components and accessories, again, I need to press the control button and I have the accessories components for 2015, 2017. Here only the list, the list of products that uh, were part of those two categories. I can check that the categories were automatically selected here. So it might be easier for you to use a slicer instead of manually filtering, manually filtering uh, the data in your Python. So those are the um, those are the slicers and how you can use them. Then you have the option to create a timeline, which uh, is um, uh, for for that timeline we would need to have some dates. We don't have the dates, we only have the years, but we need to have the dates to be able to create uh, the timeline just for you to see how a timeline uh, timeline would look could look like. It's to move back to the smart art and th that was the reason for skipping that out till now. Um, and from here to see that one one example of uh, of timeline could be like this for instance with uh the, the milestones uh with the specific events and with with um, with lines upper and down lines to show the, the kind of data that you have looking to the um, to the smart art here uh among the smart art you have the option to view them all or if you are, wor are working on presenting a process a new process analyzing an existing process or you need to create a um, organizational chart a hierarchy um, if you want to um, add for instance a pyramid uh, with uh, with different uh, layers then you can easily uh, use the the smart art and to edit the data you can edit the data within the image but i would recommend you to use this um, editor uh, test one test two and test three and that's it. You have your your uh, smart art created. Also for the smart arts, when you click on them after you you create them, a new menu appears. The smart art design, where again you can you can play with uh, with the, the formats. You can. Uh, you can um, uh, add the shape or you, you can do um, quite a few things from from here uh, as you uh, as you wish after the, the the timelines we have the link option and for the link option um, i will get back just for a moment and refer to the video dedicated to the home menu um, where we discussed about my personal recommendation of not using underline uh, for a text which is not linked to anything. So let's um, let's review this and let's say uh, learning Excel. And then, uh, as we saw in the home menu video, we can change the fonts, the size and we can also add the underline but we tend to be uh to um, whenever we see the underline text we tend to click on that because we are used to have a link an external link or internal link uh, and uh, we want to click on that so if you want to add a line i would recommend you to add double line 
just to be sure that um, your your audience will not work work the the people that you are working with are not going to click there trying to access a link so let me deactivate this and then go to go back to the link i have selected here my text if i click on the link what i can do is either to add a, a link to a, an external page for instance youtube.com and press ok and now what i have is youtube.com Another type of, um, of uh, hyperlink could be in this document. So I want when uh, I'm clicking on, the, on that specific taste, text to go here in sheet two, let's say to uh, G1, to the cell G1. Uh, and I can simply type here G1. Uh, please um, make make uh, make attention to the sheet that you have, just not to refer to a different sheet. So sheet two, cell G1, and then we can click OK. And when I click click here, it will go automatically here. So result, click, and that's selected. And we can of course turn around and add here also a link. We can also do it from here. Place in this document, I want still, still in the uh, sheet 2 to go to Q2. Okay, and then it's getting back here. So you can play with, with this one and um, whenever uh, you, you want to, to go to a reference, check the reference and get back, you can do that. And in the video dedicated for dashboards and overview, how to create a dashboard um, and also how to automate Excel, uh, we will touch much into detail uh, this, uh, this kind of um, Connect connections in uh, um, in Excel and not only, of course, because we are talking about the hyperlinks. Then you have the menu, the um, comment uh, options under the insert menu, uh, and also if you right click, you can do exactly the same to add a comment, and you can say test, test, sorry, and you have here your comment. After the, the comment um, option, we have the text box option, which uh, it's, um, it's similar with, uh, with uh, the shape option that we had, that this one is dedicated for text. So if I'm clicking here, that sign will appear. And just like I did for the shapes, I will press left press on the mouse and draw my text box. And as you can see, the text box is blank. So this allows you to have a text without the split uh, by cell. Uh, you will see in the, in the dedicated video for the view that if you want to, uh, to avoid seeing those cells or, or those cell separator, uh, you can uh, simply um, Unt untick the, the grid lines and everything will uh, will remain blank but you can go to to that video and have more details for today for the insert menu we are going to quickly quickly view it and as soon as you select this one of course you can see that the shape format appears here and what you can do it's right click format shape like we did for the shapes and then for the line for instance to have no line and then for the fill to take one specific fill and to use that one uh, as you wish and then you can put your your text uh, let's say excel learning this time and then you can select your text go to home as we saw in the home uh, video uh, change the font change the uh, alignment, change the size, and also change the color. And um, one thing that you might want to do, uh, and that could be valid for both uh, the, the text boxes and the shapes. If I'm reducing the size for other cells, let's say that I want to have a visual um, 
approach and uh, to have this uh, on the top and then to have different cells with different text what I can do to avoid shrinking or expanding this I can again right click format shape go to that option the size and properties option go to properties and select from move and size with cells don't move or size with cell and by choosing this one what will happen it will remain always in the same position no matter how many changes you do at the um, column uh, size level if you want to change the uh, if you want to align for instance the, the the columns or the rows what you can do is to right click on the column column width and then let's say um, 12 and you can do it by column or you can do for all the columns and there you can left click on the first column press on control shift right arrows right arrow right arrow right arrow till goes till the end and then right click anywhere at the column level wherever you have the uh, the letters and then column width and let's put back 12 and what you will have it will have all the cells uh, align at 12 and you can do exactly the same thing at the rows level Control shift down arrow down 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 and then on the numbers on the rows right click row height and let's put 20 and click ok and now we have exactly the same size for the cells then um, aside of the text box uh, the text options we are also to add a header and a footer uh, if we click here we will switch into this kind of view which is a more dedicated uh, uh, dedicated uh, view for printing because if we are not going to print on the uh, hard copy on the paper um, there is no usually no reason to um, where we can also print it digitally in a pdf um, there is no reason to add a, a header and a footer but if we need to do it we can do it by by um, uh, using this option and then you need to wait for a moment just until this uh, normal view appears because we now we are in the page layout mode so if we click here we get back to the initial view with the only remark that we have that dotted lines uh, that are um, still uh, showing us the uh, page um, layout that we have selected that we have selected by default in our case because we did not make any change but in the uh, page layout uh, video we are going to see exactly how we can change the layout of uh, of a page including in excel then we have the word arts which are uh, letters stylish letters let's say like this it's very similar with uh, with the text box but uh it gives you uh, some shadows some borders at the text level so you can play with that and again when you add that um you have the shape format appearing here and allowing you to uh to use different uh, different options uh to make different changes um uh, let's say let's scroll together and uh, you can uh, you can also look up among those uh, those options when we'll have the um, the sub menu video we you will see um, that are quite a few similarities between the sub menus and once you have an overview about what one of them is doing you will will uh, will have a, a clear view uh, about the others also 
Then you have the signature line, which allows you uh, to, to specify the place where a person should sign. So uh, if you need to this, do this, if you need to prepare uh, a template, a standard document format, uh, you can and you need the signature line, you can uh, add it from from here. And then you have the object option, which allows you to add an, op, uh, an object meaning that you can actually add, for instance, a file. So uh, let's say that I want to I want to add um, I want to add a, an image. And then what I can do is simply to go to uh, that image, same image, and then click OK. And as you can see, here is the the object added and if you click on that one that will open your document and you can also choose if you want to see it like this or you prefer for instance to have um, an icon to display it as an icon and that will show like this with the the logo of internet explorer or you can also link to a file create a link to a file and that will will uh, create a, a link to a to a specific file so you can actually either visualize for 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 instance if we take the images as an example you can either visualize the image or you can add the, the, the object, the image, and by the way, the object could be uh, an image, could be, um, could be a, a PDF, could be a PowerPoint, uh, could be an WordPad. So you have, uh, you have uh, quite a few options to attach documents in your Excel file. The very last, last options that we have are the equation which allow you to, uh, for instance, to, to, um, create an equation so what you can do is to, um, to, to to write here what you want let's say that we are going to change the a x plus 2 uh, and then to uh, work on your formulas in this kind of way you will have the the equation menu here that will pop up because keep in mind that whenever you need to add a formula uh, you uh, uh, and you have a uh, uh, quite complex formula you need to use this one so when I say formula I, I mean a classic formula not an Excel formula that we're going to see one by one um, in in, uh, in different videos but uh, if you need to add a mathematical f um, formula then please go to insert and equation and the very last option that we have uh, in the insert menu is the symbols and for the symbols we can add uh, some some well-known symbols like trademarks uh, copywriting uh, currencies for instance if you want to add the, the currency um, without having anything specified for instance uh, I, I I can do exactly the same if I put here a number let's say that I'm, I'm putting 100 and then I'm right clicking formatting going to currencies then uh, scrolling down until I have the euro no that's uh, decimals okay and I have the euro before but if I want for instance to have 100 and here only the euro it might be easier to add this as a symbol and that's it because I would not need to calculate everything based on the currency but simply to know at the end that I have the uh, grand total in that specific currency so uh, this is the quick overview about the um, insert menu um, please watch also the other videos with the uh, menu options in excel and sub menu option in excel also uh, the, the videos dedicated to uh, the most used functionalities that we have and also the formulas please do like uh, this video and subscribe to my channel i wish you a perfect day ahead bye bye